Cretaceous and Jurassic period are from dinosaurs that lived 70 million years ago. Oh, come on. Dinosaurs have always lived with man. We cover that in video number three. Dinosaur blood was found inside a T-Rex bone about 10 years ago. They tried everything they could to disprove it, and they couldn't. This is dinosaur blood cells. It's not going to last 70 million years. Human hands were found fossilized in the same strata as dinosaurs were found fossilized. Textbooks say the layers are different ages. I'm sorry, that's baloney. Now, Charlie Darwin didn't like round numbers. He said the weld-in deposits are 306,662,400 years old. How he knows is anybody's guess. But here they are telling the kids the layers are different ages, and yet all over the world, petrified trees are found, like this one, standing up, connecting different rock layers. Now, if you have a petrified tree standing up, running through multiple rock layers, I don't think it's common sense to say the layers are different ages. Not by much, anyway. I mean, how long can a dead tree stand there before it falls down? Five years, 10 years, 20 years, 5,000 years? I doubt that. And yet, petrified trees in the poly, they're called polystrata fossils, going through multiple layers. They're very common. Hundreds and hundreds have been found. It would only take one to prove the point. But hundreds have been found, petrified, standing up. In central Alabama, there's a large coal mine where they found all kinds of petrified trees standing up. Now, the kids have been taught for years that those two layers of coal, called the Mary Lee and the Blue Creek Formation, are different ages by millions of years. And yet, when you get all the fossils together, they label them, sample A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You can put it together and figure out and prove positively that Mary Lee and the Blue Creek had to form within a few weeks or months of each other. That's exactly what you'd get in a flood. We cover more on that on video number six about the flood, what caused the coal seams during the flood. Here's some from Cookville, Tennessee. Petrified trees standing up, running through multiple layers. Joggins, Nova Scotia is famous for its petrified trees in the vertical position. Most of these pictures are on our website, drdino.com. We've got a piece of petrified wood in our museum running through 12 different layers of slate. And they're going to tell you in school each layer of slate represents a different season. That's 12 years. I'm sorry, that's not true. That represents movement of the water and separation of the particles by density or something like that. We get into that in video six. So don't let them tell you the layers are different ages. Sometimes trees are found petrified upside down, running through multiple rock layers. Now we really have a problem. I've thought about this one until my brain hurts. As far as I can figure this out, the evolutionist only has two ways to solve this. He can say the trees stood upright for millions of years while the layers for slowly formed around them. Mm, I find that one hard to believe. Or he can say the trees grew through hundreds of feet of solid rock looking for sunlight. There's a third way to solve this. Maybe those trees were buried in a big flood. Hmm. How fast was that calf going? Hmm. Might be two ways to look at this, you know. Yeah. When Mount St. Helens blew its top, it blew thousands of trees down into Spirit Lake. Over 20,000 trees are, have already sunk to the bottom and are stuck in the mud at the bottom of Spirit Lake. Many thousands of them are standing up in the vertical position. And those trees are going to petrify. They're already beginning to petrify. It does not take long for things to petrify. Here's a piece of petrified firewood. I've got a piece of petrified pallet in our museum from a pallet shop that cut pieces of wood. Some kid sent me a box of petrified acorns. He said, Brother Hovind, I tried an experiment. I put these acorns in a bucket of water and forgot about them. A year later, I went out to, I thought maybe they might sprout, but now they're all petrified. Would you like some for your museum? I mean, they're solid rock. Here's a petrified dog inside a tree in Georgia. They cut the tree down for firewood and said, wait, 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 don't cut that one up. There's a dog inside. Turn to stone. Here's a petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's legs still in it. The boot was made in the 1950s. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. Petrified hat from New Zealand. Here's a petrified pickle in our museum. I'm not kidding. The guy sent it to me. He said, Brother Hovind, we found this old house in Montana. The roof was gone. The house had been empty for at least 30 years. We went down the basement. There's a bunch of jars of pickles, a pantry. But the lid to one of the jars rusted off, and inside the pickle turned to stone. Would you like it for your museum? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> a petrified pickle. The jar was made between 1930 and 1960. That's the year they made those jars. I don't know when the pickle got put in there, but sometime in there. Don't let them tell you it takes millions of years. There's petrified sacks of flour found in Eureka Springs, Arkansas from a fl fl flour mill that flooded in the 1910s, I believe. So kids, when they tell you the layers are different ages, you're being lied to. That's not true. Don't believe that. 
80 to 85 percent of Earth's surface does not even have three geologic periods appearing in correct consecutive order. This guy says it becomes an overall exercise of gargantuan special pleading and imagination for the evolutionary uniformitarian paradigm to maintain there ever were geologic periods. The geologic column is a hoax. One of the biggest lies ever passed off on humanity, but the vast majority of the world believes it, even though it doesn't exist. When they started teaching that in the 1830s, people began to change their worldview away from what the Bible teaches to this new view from Charlie Lyell, the lawyer from Scotland, that each layer was a different age. This teaching really had a strong influence on a young preacher from England. There was a fellow that just graduated from Bible college to be a preacher. His name was Charles Darwin. The only degree Darwin ever got was a theology degree. And today they call him a great scientist. All he got was a theology degree. Which is not bad, I mean, but he, you know, he's not a scientist. Charles Darwin set sail on board the Beagle. He's going to sail around the world and collect bugs for somebody back in England. And he decided to bring some books with him to read. He's going to be gone for five years. As he sailed around, he brought with his Bible. And he brought with that book by Charles Lyell, Principles of Geology. 